So we continue with uh, topic number three. And today we are going to discuss about the production possibilities fronting. So what is the PPF? A PPF shows a various combination of two goods that can be produced with a fixed quantities of inputs. It means that I have fixed quantities of inputs like labor and capital. And now I choose a combination between good X and Y. I can produce 100X 50Y, or I can produce 50X 100Y, or 80X uh, 30Y, or so on. So uh, that combination comes along this line, what we call it the production possibilities fronty. So this fronty is derived from the production contract curve that we have discussed previously. And the point on PPF show efficiently produced level of both goods. Means that when we choose that combination between X and Y, good X and Y, if that combination is along this PPF or the production possibilities frontier, means that we are producing at the efficient level. If we have if we are producing at point which is below that of uh, lie below that line, when we are in efficiency, means that we can improve. Means that we are not using our input efficiently to produce our output so that we have less output. If that uh, combination can, lies above the line, that also if it's in efficiency, actually we cannot produce there because we do not have the resources to reach to that point. So let's see it here. For example, I say at point A is inefficient because at this point here we are not using all resources and therefore we can produce better. But if we are at point B, C and D, we are at efficient level. So that combination you can see is that we may produce at B, maybe half, half quantity, 50, 50. At C, less clothing, more food. At D, also more for the less clothing and more food. At OC here, we are producing all food and zero clothing. And at OF, we are producing all clothing and zero food. So in this diagram, as we say, is derived from the production contract curve. And each point on both this contract curve and the production possibility front describe an efficiency produced level of both X and Y or clothing and food. So if I take at point A, where this represent inefficient allocation, and this is lies inside the production front possibility. This is the PPF and the A is inside or below. So all the point within the triangle ABC, this A, B, and C, all the point comes here. That's what we call involve a complete utilization of labor and capital that we use in production, you know, but the distortion in the labor market, perhaps due to a rent maximizing union, where, for example, you, you have union of labor where they need to reduce the, uh, the amount of labor in order to increase wages. So if this is uh, happen, this will cause the economy as a whole to be inefficient because actually you have an input and therefore you cannot produce with that same input, but you still cannot produce at B, C or D, but rather you're going to produce somewhere between A, B and C here due to the wages has been increased. So, where we end up on the production possibility front in this PPF depend on also consumers demand for goods, not only about, uh, you know, because we are using combination of both capital and labor, but here, if you are producing at B, C, or D, it's all inefficient, but which one actually is 
the one that maximizes the efficiency, the efficiency. Is it B, C, or D? In order to see that, we need to consider also consumer preferences. So, for example, suppose consumers tend to prefer food rather than clothing. So, consumers wanted or willing to buy more food rather than the clothing. You don't produce at B, but mostly you're going to produce at point D. And, and if consumers prefer clothing rather than food, then you are going to produce somewhere between B and here or F, maybe here, maybe here, maybe here. So you do this combination. So you yourself will produce, in that case, more clothing rather than more food. So the question now, why is this production possibility frontier or PPF downward sloping? I think you will know the answer because you see the shape is downward sloping. So in order to produce more food efficiently, okay, to produce more food efficiently, what we need or as a producer, we must switch input from production of clothing, means that the input labor and capital that are producing the clothing, we shift them to here and we produce food. So, this is will turn towards the clothing production level. Now, we have the PPF or production possibility frontier is downward sloping, uh, as I say, in order to produce more of one of goods must give up producing some of the other goods. And it is a concave in that, in that way, uh, which is, that is concave. So, the slope is the marginal rate of technical substitution, which increase as the level of production of food increase. So, from here to here, goes from here to here, you see the marginal rate of technical substitution is this, not the same. So, here may be one, at B maybe is one, at D is two. Here at B, in order to produce one more food, I will give up one more clothing. A D is no. In order to produce one more uh, uh, clothing, I have to give up two more food. Or in order to produce one more food, I give up half clothing. So in that way, it comes. This is why we say the marginal rate of chicken substitution increases as the level of production of food increase. So once the production of food increase, then this um, uh, marginal rate of chicken substitution moving from B to C increase, moving from C to D increase, moving from D to maybe E here also increase. So in that way, it gives us this a concave PPF. So now we talk about the marginal rate of transformation. So the marginal rate of transformation MRT of food for the clothing is the magnitude of the slope of the frontier at each point. And the amount of one good that must be given up to produce one additional unit of the second good. But how much clothing must be given up to produce one additional unit of food as we increase the production of food, then we will move along the PPF and this the marginal rate of transformation increase. In a simple way, the marginal rate of transformation is we transform the input of producing food to the producing of clothing or vice versa. So the marginal production possibilities, okay, 
is a concave, as we say, and the slope increases the magnitude as more force is produced. So we define the marginal rate of transformation of food for clothing MRT as the magnitude of the slope of frontier at each point here, B or D, okay? So the marginal rate of transformation measures how much clothing must be given up for example, if I want to shift from B, how much clothing must be given up to produce one additional food? For example, go from B to D. So this is transformation. You know, we transfer the import, which is labor capital, to pro uh, producing clothing to producing food. For this example, for example, here in this figure, we have At point B, uh, on the PPF here, the MRT equal to 1, or the marginal rate of transformation equal 1. That means one unit of clothing must be given up to obtain one additional unit of food. But at D, the marginal rate of transformation is 2 because of two units of clothing here, yeah. it must be given up to obtain one more of food. Okay. So you can see from B to OF, the MRT is less than one. Here equal to one. Here is less than one. And from B and onward going to OC, the MRT is greater than one. Here equal to Maybe he is 2.5, maybe he is 3. Okay. So, means that we increase the production of food by moving along the production possibilities frontier, the MRT will increase. Moving from B to D, D to E, E to F, the MRT is increasing. So, this increase occurs because why? Because the marginal productivity of labor and capital differs depending on whether the input are used to produce more food or more clothing. To understand that, we suppose that um, we start at OF, where we are producing all clothing but zero food. So now we we move some of the labor and capital that we use to produce clothing, okay? And we put it in producing of food. So usually when the companies are intent to producing all clothing, means that the marginal productivity of producing the clothing is relatively low. So that we put them in the food production, where the, the marginal product is higher. Okay? And this situation, in order to reach or to obtain the first unit of food, okay, let's say here, the first unit move from here to here, first unit of food, how much clothing we lose from here to here? So if you see, yeah, it's something very little. So very little clothing production is lost. And this is what we say, the marginal rate of transformation is less than one. But as we move along the PPF and produce less clothing here, move here, and more food, the productivities or the marginal product of labor and capital in clothing production start rising, increasing, 
Okay. And the amount of productivity of labor and capital in food start to decrease. For example, until we reach at B, where we have the productivities are equal and the marginal rate of transformation exactly equal to one. That means productivities of capital and labor of producing clothing equal to the productivities of labor and capital in producing of food and equal to one. If we continue along the PPF, we will notice that because the input productivities in clothing rising more than productivities in food decrease, uh, the marginal rate of transformation become, become greater than one. And we will have this scenario. After B, since the productivities of clothing keep increasing and productivities of uh, food keep decreasing, then the marginal rate of transformation keep increasing and become more than one until reach two and more than two. So we come here to this equation. We describe the shape of the production possible frontier in terms of the cost of production now. So we are going to talk about the cost of production. We're talking about the margin of production. At this point, at OF here, where very little clothing output is lost to produce additional food, if we move from OF only to here, is very little of clothing loss to produce one unit of food. And so here the marginal cost of producing food is very low because you see how much it costs us, huh? only little. So a lot of output is produced with little input and we can say that the marginal cost of producing clothing is very high why because if we want to produce from here to here only little from here to here for example if you want to produce only little of clothing see how much we need to trade off of food so the marginal cost of producing clothing is very high and the marginal cost of producing food is very low. So we takes a lot of both input to produce another unit of clothing so that it is the cost, marginal cost is very high and therefore when the marginal rate transformation is low, so the ratio of the marginal cost of producing food Okay, marginal cost of producing food, MC, F, is the ratio, as I say, the ratio of marginal cost of producing food, MSV, to the ratio of the marginal cost of producing cloth, MFC, And here the slope of the production front possibilities, we can say it measure the marginal cost of producing one good relative to the marginal cost of producing another. And we will have this MRT or marginal rate of transformation equal to the marginal cost of producing food divided by the marginal cost of, produ of producing clothes. So if I put here, so it will have MC at this marginal cost of producing food divided by the marginal cost of producing clothing. Again, Always think of the relative, how much it will cost us of producing food 
is how much we are going to give up of producing food. How much we are, will cause us to produce food is how much it goes us to give up producing clothing. So that in a, 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 a relative prices rather than the absolute prices. So as I say, if we go, for example, to point B, okay, a point B, we have the marginal transformation equal one. What does it mean? Does it mean MFC divided by MSC equal to one? Means that the marginal cost of producing food equal to the marginal cost of producing clothing. And it is true because at point B, how much? It cost me to produce one additional clothing. It cost me one unit of food. So I need to give up one unit of food to produce one additional unit of clothing. How much it cost me to produce one, mean one unit of food? In order to have one additional unit of food, it will cost me one unit of clothing. So at point B, the marginal rate of transformation equal one means that the marginal cost of food equal to the marginal cost of clothing. So if I want to two unit or two additional unit of clothing, then I need to give up two unit of food. If I want four unit additional of clothing, I need also to give up four unit of food. So always I have I'm at point B. But if I go to point D, for example, okay. Um here, suppose that the import needed to produce one unit of food cost me, let's say, $160. Okay? And the marginal cost of food so will be $160. So how much the marginal cost of clothing since the marginal MRT equal to, so the marginal cost of food divided by the cost of clothing equal to. So means in order to produce one additional unit of food, I need to give up two units of clothing. Since the marginal cost of food is 160, so how much the marginal cost of clothing will be? Automatically will be 80 because 80 times 2 will have 160. So, and this is MRT equal to, we will have the marginal cost of producing clothing will be 80. So I will have eight, uh, 160 M M marginal cost of food, divide my marginal uh, uh, cost of Clothing equal 160 divided by 80 and equal to 2. Here, let's say at point B, it will cost me, let's say, $100 to produce one unit of food. So in order to produce one additional unit of food, uh, which is cost me 100, I need to give up 100 also dollar, which is one unit of Clothing. And here, MRT equal one, that's mean marginal cost of producing food equal to the marginal cost of producing the clothing. So, MCF divided by MCC equal to one, because 100 divided by 100 equal to one. So, we will have this. So, at equilibrium or efficiency, remember that the marginal rate of transformation equal to the marginal cost of food divided by the marginal cost of clothing. Or if you are talking about X and Y, the marginal cost of X divided the marginal cost of Y. Remember X at the horizontal axis and Y at the vertical axis.
So this is another very important formula that you need to remember, which is the marginal rate of transformation equal to the marginal cost of good X divided by the marginal cost of good Y. So now we talk about the output efficiency. So we say for an economy to be efficient, goods must not only be produced at the minimum cost, but also good must be produced in combination that match people willingness to pay for them. Because if people willingness to pay is very low, then it's no point to produce those goods at very low cost. Even you produce it at a very low cost, you cannot sell it because, or even you want to sell, maybe you said it's very low prices and you may not have maximized your profit. So another thing now we are going to look is the marginal rate of substitution where we present the willingness or consumers willingness, willingness to pay for this additional good by consumer another good. So to understand this principle, you have to remember that we have discussed that the marginal rate of substitution of clothing, for example, MRS, measures the consumer willingness to pay for an additional unit of good by consuming less clothing. Put in that way, if you are a consumer, uh, you, uh, you are consuming only two goods, clothing and food. So your willingness to pay for food is how much you are willing to forgive or to trade off consuming clothing. So this is what we call the marginal rate of substitution. Substitute one good with another good. And we also understand that the marginal rate of transformation measures the cost of an additional unit of food in term producing less clothing. Means if we want to produce one more unit of food, how much will cost us in le producing less of clothing? So this is, so in order to reach equilibrium then, these two slopes of the marginal rate of substitution must be equal, means that the marginal rate of substitution equal to the marginal rate of transformation. So we can see this is here. For example, is it possible or what if the marginal rate of transformation does not actually equal to the marginal rate of substitution? Suppose that the marginal rate of transformation equal one, means in order to produce one additional unit of food or clothing, you need to forgan for for, for gun one unit of food. In order to produce one unit of clothing, you need to forgan one unit of food in the production. So you transform one unit of food with one unit of clothing. And suppose the willingness to pay measured as the marginal rate of substitution equal to means in order for a consumer to consume one unit of food, it must forgive for, for gun two units of clothing or vice versa. Okay. So consumers will willing to give up two units of clothing to get one unit of food. But in the same time, we have the cost of getting additional food is only one unit of lost clothing. So here we will have two little good is being produced. Since we going to have only in order to, okay, once we lost one uh, clothing, we just produce only one additional food. So two little food will be produced. 
but food production must be increased because the marginal rate of substitutions is very high. People are willing to give up two units of clothing to get one food. So we will have here the food production must increase and the marginal rate of substitution falls and the marginal rate of transformation increase until the two are equal. So I see it here. I see it here. Okay, yeah. So this is the production possibility fronting. Either I produce 100 units of food or either I produce 60 units of clothing or I produce a combination. This is the indifference curve for the consumers that represent the marginal rate of substitution. We say, to understand that logic, if you remember, we say to reach efficiency, the slope of the margin or the slope of indifference curve must be equal to the PP or the price this. So the marginal rate of substitution, this is the line, it must be tangent with the indifference curve. Why it is tangent at point C here? And the same for the production possibilities front here. What is the slope for that? It could be so many slopes here, right? But where it goes, it is tangent with the indifference curve at point C. So we will have marginal rate of substitution at point C equal to the marginal rate of transformation. So in this figure shows that an important output efficiency condition graphically here. So we have one consumer's indifference curve on the production possibility front here. At point C here, the only point of the production possibility front here that maximize the consumer satisfaction, as I say, because the MRS tangent the indifference curve. In the same time, although all points of the production frontier are technically efficient, but not all of them, let's say here or here, no of them involved in the most efficient production of good from the consumer perspective. At the point of tangency here at C, of the indifference curve and the production frontier, the marginal rate of sub substitution, which is the slope of the indifference curve, equal exactly to the marginal rate of transformation, which is the slope of production frontier also. And here we say that these slope are equal, therefore the marginal rate of substitution equal to the marginal rate of transformation and we reach equilibrium. And if we see at this here, where we have so many um, indifference curve, A1, A2, A3. So in a single person economy, for example, economic efficiency in production and exchange, and here where we have maximum social welfare is achieved at point M. Why? Because at point M star, we have the MRS, marginal rate of substitution for AT, uh, A2, uh, indifference curve A2, is equal to the marginal uh, 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 transformation, MRT, okay? Because the slope are equal to two. So MRT for good X and Y equal to the MRS for good equal to one and equal in this case three over two. So, Indifference curve at A2 for individual, the only individual in society is tangent to his or her production possibilities fronty, which is TT. 
utilities. So the output is six of X and three of Y and therefore equal to six over three. So output is six X and three Y. And the marginal of substitution is three over two. Now we talk about efficiency in output market. We say that when output market are perfectly competitive, consumers allocate their budget so that the marginal rate of substitution MRS between two goods are equal means that the MRS of good X equal to the MRS of good Y. So are equal to the price ratio and we have MRS equal to price of food or price of X equal to the price of uh, clothes or price of Y. So the marginal rate of substitution equal to the PF divided by PC or price of F divided by price of C. And now we say also in the same time, each profit maximizing firm, the firm to maximize the profit, it must produce where the output or its output up to the point where we have the price equal to the marginal cost in the perfect competitive market. We say we produce at P, F or price of food equal to the marginal cost of food and PC equal or the price of clothes equal to the marginal cost of the clothes or PC equal to MC of C. So if I change this PF divided by PC, since I have PF equal to MCF, so I will have here MCF divided by MCC, then this actually equal to the marginal rate of transformation. Since the marginal rate of transformation equal to MCF divided by MCC, which is actually equal in the competitive market, the PF divided by PC because M MCF actually equal to PF and MC, uh, MCC equal to PC because in the competitive market we say firm will maximize its profit when produced at the price equal to the marginal cost. Therefore, this PF divided by PC equal to the marginal rate of substitution and we will have we will maximize our efficiency only when the marginal rate of substitution equal to the marginal rate of technical, oh sorry, a marginal rate of transformation and equal to this point, which is also shows in this graph. So this graph with this formula are same. So we can do it mathematically here, or we can show it in the graph. So I remember now in the figure that we have seen shows that the efficient competitive output market are achieved when the production and consumption choices are separ separated. And to do that, assume that or suppose the market generate a price ratio of PF1 divided by P. C1, this is the ratio. So if producers are using input efficiently, they will produce food and clothing at point A. Okay. Where the price ratio equal to the marginal rate of transformation. So the slope of produce production possibilities from T A equal to the MR. T. 
So when faced with the budget constraint, consumers also would like to consume at B. Now here, first producer will produce at A. At A here, you can see the MRT is tangent with this line. But consumers, this day in difference curve, where it is tangent to the line, PF1 divided by PC1, it is here at point B, where they can maximize the satisfaction at a higher indifference curve at U2. But however, the price ratio P1F divided by P1C, producers will not produce the combination of food and clothing at B, because at A, they will produce C1 and F1, but consumer want to have C2 and F2. So because the producers want to produce C1 and F1, there will be an excess demand for food. So they produce C1, but consumer want only, sorry, yeah, C2. So, and here, they want to produce F1, consumers they want F2. So we have um, excess in clothing, but for food, what we have? Shortage. So how now equilibrium will happen from shifting from A to B? So since, as I say, at point A here, the firms would like to produce only F1, but Consumers would like to consume F2. So there is excess in food, in the demand of food, or shortage in the supply. We say we have excess in demand, that's mean demand more than supply, or shortage of supply, in other words. And the same thing for clothing. Consumers would like to consume only C2, but producers would like to produce C1 at A1. So we will have an excess of supply here. Not a shortage of supply uh, of uh, supply of food, but we have an excess of supply in clothing and shortage of supply in food. So in that case, the prices in the market will adjust automatically. How? The price of food will rise this is the price of food will rise because people demanded more food. So there is shortage of supply or excess of demand. So automatically when we have shortage of supply, the price of food will increase. And at the same time, the price for clothes will fall because we'll have excess of supply and shortage of demand. Supply more than demand. So the price will fall down. So price for clothing fell down, price for food increase. What does it mean? This encourage firms to produce more food and reduce production, producing clothing. Means shifting the input, which is labor and capital of producing clothing and transform it to producing of food. And this is keep going, 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 going until reach at point B when we reach this 
the indifference curve of consumers. You can notice one thing now here. At point B is actually beyond the production frontier. So this is, as a firm, it will produce at the frontier, right? So start reducing, producing clothes uh, cloth and increase production of food goes from A, goes from here, 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 until it's somewhere here. The consumers actually at point B, it has this indifference curve, but if changing from U2 to U1, well, we have point C. At point C, then we will have the marginal rate of substitution equal to the marginal rate of transformation, and this is equal to the PF star divided by PF C, uh, sorry, PC star, or the price of food at star divided by price of cloth star. So at the equilibrium, we will produce C star and food star. So we say in equilibrium, there is no way to make a consumer better off without making another consumer worse off. Hence, this equilibrium is a Pareto efficient and the production or the producers want to sell F star of unit of food and C star unit of clothing. Consumer also want to buy the same amount of unit and we will have equilibrium where the marginal rate of transformation equal to the marginal rate of substitution. So you can see here the indifference curve or the utility curve of the consumer shifting from U2 to U1. So at here, actually consuming a little less than C2 that we have at the beginning, and also less than one half F2, what have at the beginning. Because anyway, if you want to still to produce at F2 and C2, that one is an attainable because we don't have, actually producers, they don't have the resources to produce that. Producers, they could produce only on the PPF here. So the best one, it is at point C. So at point C, the four consumers, they will reduce a little bit of consuming of C and also a little, little bit of consuming of F and there we reach equilibrium. So by reaching equilibrium, it is not only about the cost of producing those goods, but also the willingness to consume it. So you can see, usually producers at the beginning want to produce at A, but because the willingness to consume food and clothing for consumers is very high, then this is change the firms to reallocate its resources and therefore produce less clothes, more food until we reach at point C. Now we go, we talk about general equilibrium of production and exchange of parity optimality. So we can say that Simultaneous general equilibrium of production and exchange. We assume we have two individuals, N and B, and we have two commodities, X and Y. Two inputs, which is labor and capital. And every point in the, I, let me, this is an explanation what I'm going to have here. So I'm going straight to the graph. So I say, Every point 
here at for this PPF, this is it shows that efficiency. So if you put on the PPF front here, which is T T here, is a point of general equilibrium of production. We suppose that this economy produce 10 unit of X and N unit of Y, which is at M star or M slash. Okay. So every point on the production possible from the PPF in this figure is a point of dinner equilibrium of production and every point on the contract curve for the exchange, which is this here, is also a point of dinner equilibrium of exchange, means that consumers are maximizing their utilities at D, E and F. Producers are maximizing their production at J star, M star, N star. So, however, to simultaneously in general equilibrium for production and exchange, the marginal rate of sub transformation of commodity X for commodity Y in the production must be, we say, is equal to the marginal rate of substitution of commodity X for commodity Y, or we say the marginal rate or MRT must equal to the MRS. But here, I want you to put it in that way. I put, we put this is as a square and we put it as what we call it, uh, the Edgeworth box diagram. You can see, here we have also two, four, six, eight, which is representing two, four, six, eight for the consumer, and this is for the producers. Here. This is for the producers, X and Y, but this is inside here for the consumers. So how we are going to read this? So, this equation that just now I show it here, marginal rate of transformation equal to the marginal rate of substitution, right? Okay. The equation corresponds to the point of the construct curve for exchange at which the common slope of an indifference curve of an individual A and individual B are equal to the slope of TT or PPF. So the slope of TT here, how much, which is this at point M slash MRT, equal to three divided by two. Okay, now, if I look now to the MRS, MRS is here. So, the MRS here of A and B, this is A, this is B, two consumers. So they are going to maximize, we say, when the, the slope of both the indifference curve are equal. So if we take this slope, do you think this slope, it is like that, huh? This slope is equal to this, no. Why? This like that is a bit uh, steeper. This like that is a bit flatter. Automatically, they are not the same. So that's mean MRT here, which equal to over two, does not equal the MRS here of A and B, does not equal. So this is a bit flat. Let's see this at point D. So the slope is this. So at here, we will have the indifference curve or MRS for X and Y for consumer A equal to the MRS 
for X and Y for cons consumer B, but does it equal to an RT? No, this is a bit uh, steeper, more steeper than this, if you can see. So at point D also, MRT does not equal to MRS for A and MRS for B. So is not equilibrium. If I look at point E, I will have the month, the indifference curve of A, consumer A, and indifference curve of consumer B. At point E, we have they have the same slope. And this MRS of A equal MRS of consumer B and equal to three divided by two. And you can see this slope are parallel, exactly parallel. When two slope are exactly parallel, that means they are identical. So means this slope and this slope are identical. So the slope, this, which is marginal rate of substitution for A equal to the marginal rate of substitution for B and equal to the marginal rate of transformation and equal to T over two. So at this here point E, then we will have MRS of A equal to the MRS of B and equal to the MRS, oh sorry, MRT and equal to three over two. So at this point, how much when producing 10 unit of X and 8 unit of Y at this point M slash. This economy is simultaneously in general equilibrium of production and again exchange when individual A consume here, yeah. individual A, yeah. consume how much? Six unit of X and three unit of what? Uh, sorry. Uh, here, here. Five unit of Y, six of X and five unit of Y. And individual B will consume the rest, which is four unit of X and five unit for five of Y. Or here. Y. So these two that we share these 10 X and 8 Y. How they share it? Consumer A will take 6 X. OK. And consumer B will take the rest, which is 4. How much later? 4. The remaining 4. And consumer A will take 3Y here. How much the rest for consumer B? 5Y here. Because this is for B, this is for A. So consumer A will take 6, 3. Consumer B will take 4, 5 at point E. So if we sum them, sum them together, add this together too, then we will have 10X and 8y. So there we reach equilibrium. So we can say since in production only 3 over 2y need to be given up to, to produce additional X because MRT equal three over two, right? Society would have to produce more X and less Y to be simultaneously in general equilibrium of production and exchange. That is if MRS 
and imagine rate of substitution for x and y equal to 3. The society would not have chosen to produce a point m star at here if let's say the marginal rate of substitution is 3, not 3 over 2. Maybe at 3, which is maybe here, n. But would have to produce a point n here. We have 12x and 4y. At this here, point n, the MRS equal to the MRT equal 3. So if the marginal rate of substitution shifted from 3 over 2 to 3, then the Gini equilibrium will be at point M, but not at point M star. So also the opposite is true at point F. If we look at point uh, F, So we only have the marginal rate of substitution here, we assume equal half, okay? See, the marginal rate of transformation equal to three over two at M, but we have the marginal rate of substitution equal to half, they are not equal, right? So more y need to be given up in the production in order to obtain one additional unit of x, then individual a and b are willing to give up in consumption. So in this scenario, we will have this society would have chosen to produce actually at point j star here, where at j star we have four x. and 13 one. Yes. And at this J star, we will have the marginal of substitution equal to the marginal of transformation and equal to half. So you can see, you as a firm, you should, you should change your production uh, allocation depend on the marginal rate of substitution. If the marginal substitution at E, you produce at M star or M slash. If the marginal uh, rate of substitution at F, you produce at N slash. If the marginal rate of sub substitution is at D, then you would like to produce at J slash. So this is in explanation, what we have done. So now um, we talk about the marginal conditions for the economic efficiency and Pareto optimally. Then after that, we go to the gain for trade. So Pareto optimally means that the maximum economic efficiency and general equilibrium of production and exchange or we say a distribution of input among commodities and of commodities among consumer is Pareto optimal or efficient if no reorganization of production and consumption is possible by which some individuals are made better off in their own judgment without making someone else worse off. So when we reach a level where you cannot make someone better off without making another one worse off. Then we reach the Pareto optimality, and there is no possible for a firm or a producer to reallocate the production. So any change that improves the well-being of some individuals without reducing the well-being of others clearly improve the welfare of society as a whole and should be undertaken. This will move the society from the Pareto non-optimal position to a Pareto optimal. 
So if there is a possibility that one that we can make someone better off without making another one worse off, then that means we are not in the Pareto optimum. We are in the Pareto non-optimum, so we should move forward and make this Pareto optimum. When we reach there, then we cannot actually, or it is impossible for us to reallocate production, you know, to uh, in order to make uh, to improve the society. That in, in that point, it is done. The marginal condition for economic efficiency and Pareto optimality also. If we assume economy of two individuals, two commodities, no production. So the marginal rate of substitution is the same for both individuals. Once on the contract curve, the economy is in general equilibrium or a Pareto optimum in exchange. Economy of two consumers to impose no exchange. The marginal rate of transform of technical substitution of labor and capital is the same for both commodities. So once on the production contract curve, the economy is in general equilibrium or Pareto optimum in the production. The last one, Pareto optimum in the production and exchange simultaneously is an economy of many inputs, many commodities and many individuals. So the marginal rate of transformation in production equal to the marginal rate of substitution in consumption for every pair of commodities and for every pair of individual consuming both commodities. And now we talk about the gain from free trade. As we know that we have discussed the gain from trade in the Edgeworth box with two consumers or two producers. But what about gain from trade with two countries that one has a comparative advantage on the other in particular goods? So we say that a country has a comparative advantage over another country in the production of a good if the first country can produce the good at a lower opportunity cost than the other country. You should not confuse between absolute advantage and comparative advantage. Talking about comparative advantage means that you compare the, the, the opportunity cost of the two countries. For example, if I have good X and Y, in order to produce one unit of X, I need to forgone two unit of Y. And another country, in order to produce one unit of X, need to forego on only one unit of Y. So which one has a competitive advantage? The one it has the lowest opportunity cost. Absolute uh, advantage in a producing a good is if its cost is lower than the cost of another country. So that one is that the data cost means that to produce X, I need five dollar. To, to pro, another country to produce X, it need two dollar. So it, it, it we will not consider opportunity cost, but the actual cost. So we have this example. We have two countries producing two goods, Holland and Italy, and they produce cheese and wine. Holland has a competitive advantage in producing cheese and Italy has a competitive advantage in producing wine and the trade is good for both countries. Why? Let's see. OK, you can see Holland. These hours of labor required to produce cheese and wine. So for Holland, it needs one hour to produce one pound of cheese and two hours to produce uh, one uh, gall of wine. Okay. And for Italy, it needs six hours to produce one pound of cheese and three hours to produce one gall of wine. So we can see here um, 
Holland has absolute advantage in producing both cheese and wine. It costs less, right? Why? A worker there can produce a pound of, che of cheese, as I say, in one hour, and a gallon of wine in only two hours. If you compare with Italy, it needs six hours of one uh, pound of cheese and three hours of one gallon of wine. So in terms of absolute, Holland has both absolute advantage. Now what about, um, uh, what do you say? A comparative advantage. So comparative advantage should be a bit different. So Holland has a comparative advantage over Italy in producing cheese. Why? Holland cost of cheese production in terms of hours of labor used that is half its cost of producing wine. So one divided by two in order to produce one, in order to produce one cheese, it need to go on two gallon of wine. So Italy cost producing cheese is twice its cost of producing wine. Here is half, by here is one, six hours two. In order to produce cheese, it needs six hours of hours. And in order to produce wine, it needs three hours. So divided here by three by three, we will have two, one. Six over two is two. The six over three is two, right? So Italy has a competitive advantage in producing wine. So it needs less uh, hours, which it can produce at half of the cost at which can produce cheese. So in order to produce one wine, so here it must be two, right? Divide by three by three, one, two, right? So it's two cheese. So here, if divide by two by two, it will be half. In order to produce wine, it costs of organ half. So we say that, Poland has a comparative advantage over Italy in producing cheese, and Italy has a comparative advantage over uh, Holland in producing wine. So when there is a comparative advantage, free trade allows the country to consume outside the PPF. So, means that if this is the PPF, when we have a trade, those countries, they can consume over the PPF. Not produce, consume. Okay? So before trade, producers at, let's say, here. Yeah. Okay. So before trade, producers at A. Okay. And there where we have on the indifference curve U1, where the marginal rate of transformation and this is, okay, this is pre-trade, right? MRT here. And we have the pre-trade prices of one is twice as the price of cheese. This is what it shows in the table. Okay? Because we 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 do the we measure the price as hours, number of hours. We assume that the wage are similar. If Holland were able to trade it would want to export, for example, two pounds of cheese in exchange for one gallon of wine. At this, okay, one over half. But suppose now that the trade barrier doesn't have, and Holland and Italy are both open to trade, they can trade. And we suppose that the result of 
differences in demand and cost in the two countries, okay, trade occurs on a one-to-one -one basis. So hold on, find it. Um, advantages to produce, for example, upon B. Why? Here it is a tangent to the point where the tangency here one over one price line this so tangent with that and Holland production possibility front is so this Holland production front is and this is the price line, so it will produce here when the price line tangent the PPM. But this is not end of the story. At point B, this represents the production decision in Holland. Once the trade barrier has removed Poland will produce less wine. Suppose produce at A, right? So suppose produce this, but now producing at B. So produce less wine. And suppose to produce here, now producing here, and more cheese. With trade, consumption will occur where it does, this production, huh? So when we do trade, we talk about consumption, how much we consume. So when we do trade, so without trade, the consumption occur here at point B, uh, sorry, at point A, where the marginal rate of substitution for consumption equal to the marginal rate of transformation of PPF at point A, which is equal to the same. But now, with trade, we'll produce at B, CB and WB. But how much it consume? It will consume at U2. So the indifference curve increase. That's mean the consumption will be maximized. So at point D, we will have higher indifference curve U2, which is tangent to the trade price line. This is the trade price line. Huh? This is the domestic order before the trade prices. So, yes. So, in this case, the trade has an effect on expanding Holland consumption. Before, Holland cons consume only here at this point and this point. But here, consuming more expanding this indifference curve. So expanding our consumption choices beyond its production possibility frontier. So you can see this is the PPF before trade in order to maximize the efficiency, it must produce an A. But now actually it can maximize efficiency, but produce, but consume beyond the PPF. So it consume at the therefore what Holland do since Holland can produce only WB, but it has a possibility to consume at WD. So it will import WD minus WB. That import. And consume only CD, but produce CB. So this is extra we export it to Italy. So it will import from Italy WD minus WB and it will export to Italy CB minus CD and both the countries will gain. So if I draw another dra graph, it will show that Italy export this WD minus WB and import this W. B minus W, uh, sorry, C, B minus C, D. So you see with trade, the consumption 
for Holland increase beyond its PPF production possibility fronting. And this is a huge impact. So with trade, each country will undergo a number of important adjustments as Holland import wine, the production of domestic wine will fall as therefore employment also in the wine industry. And if the cheese production will increase, however, as with the number of jobs in the industry will increase for the cheese. But again, not everyone will gain as the result of free trade. For example, although consumer will clearly be better off consuming more, but producers of wine actually and workers in the wine industry in Holland, they suffer more because they will produce less and they will be only less job for wine industry. For in Holland, and for cheese, they will be opposite. They will produce more cheese than than before, and also for the worker of cheese will increase. Unless some workers that they used to work for wine, if they upskill their skills, you know, they upgrade their skills and they can shift to the cheese industry, then that is fine. But not everyone can do that. So uh, now we talk about this um, an overview of efficiency of competitive markets. If we start from the beginning, what we have done, we talk about efficiency in exchange. What we say, we say that all allocations must lie on the exchange contract curve so that every consumer's marginal rate of substitution of food for clothing is the same. Or we say the marginal rate of substitution for James for food and clothes equal to the marginal rate of substitution for K for food and clothes. We say like that, right? If you remember at the beginning. Then also, we say in a competitive market achieve this efficient outcome because for cons consumers, the tendency of the budget line and the highest attainable indifference curve ensure that the marginal rate of substitution for J equal to the marginal rate of substitution for K and equal to the price of food divided the price of clothes. So this is efficiency in exchange. We talk also about efficiency in the use of input production. And we say if we produce marginal rate of technical substitution, MRTS of labor for capital is equal in the production of both goods, means that the marginal rate of technical substitution for food for both labor and capital equal to the marginal rate of technical substitution for clothing for both labor and capital. And we say that the competitive market achieve this technically efficient outcome because each producer maximize profit by choosing labor and capital input so that the ratio of the input prices is equal to the marginal rate of technical substitution or what we call it the MRTS for food equal to W divided by R and equal to the MRTS for clothing or we say MRTS for food for L and K divided by MRTS for clothes divided by L and K equal to W over R or wage over rent. Now, we, then after today, we talk about efficiency in output market and we had, I think, six output, if I'm mistaken, four, four, yeah. So the mix of output must be chosen so that the marginal rate of trans transformation MRT between output is equal to the consumer marginal rate of substitution, or we say MRT for food and clothes equal to the MRS for food and clothes for all consumers. This is the first. And but also we say uh, in a competitive market achieve this efficient outcome because Profit maximizing producers increase this out, their output to the point at which the marginal cost equal to the to the prices or 
we say price of food equal to the marginal cost of food and price of clothes equal to the marginal cost of clothes. And this is result in the marginal rate of transformation for food and clothes equal to the marginal cost of food divided by the marginal cost of clothes and equal to the price of food divided by the price of clothes. But consumer maximize their satisfaction in competitive market only if we say the PF or price of food divided by price of uh, close equal to the marginal rate of substitution. And therefore, from this and this, we will have the marginal rate Substitution for food and close equal to the marginal rate of transformation for food and close. And therefore, the output efficiency condition are satisfied. And thus, efficiency requires that goods be produced in combination and at a cost that make people willing less to pay for them. So please remember this MRT equal to the MRS equal to marginal cost of food or X divided by marginal cost of clothing or, or Y and equal to the price of food or price of Y, uh, sorry, price of food or price of X divided price of C or price of Y. This is the mass, you must remember that when we talk about competitive market or efficiency in competitive market. So we have one, two, three, four. Now we go and talk to another important topic. Why market fail? So there is four uh, reasons the market to fail. First, the market power, incomplete information, externalities, and public goods. We start with the market power. Market power usually when we have a monopoly, for example. And remember, in competitive market, we say, Producers will produce to maximize their profit when the price of the, of the X, for example, equal to the marginal cost of X. But in a monopoly, no. Always the price of X is equal to the uh, uh, greater than the marginal cost of X. So this is, we will not have, therefore, the efficiency where MRT equal to M, uh, marginal cost of F divided by marginal cost of C. So those with the market power choose the price and quantity. Less output is sold than in a competitive market. Then we will have an efficiency and can have market power as a producer or as an input. So we suppose that a producer of food in this uh, um, Edgeworth box diagram has a monopoly power. So we choose the output and quantity actually at which the marginal revenue huh, equal to the marginal cost and which is not when the marginal cost equal to the price. No. So if we choose the production when the marginal revenue equal to the marginal cost in the monopoly. And it sells less output and the price should be higher if compared to competitive market. So the lower output will mean a lower marginal cost of food production. Meanwhile, the free up production input will be allocated to produce clothing, thus the marginal cost will increase. As a result, the marginal rate of transformation will decrease because the marginal rate of transformation equal to the marginal cost of food divided by the marginal cost of clothes. So here, since the marginal cost for in, uh, is increase for the, uh, the cloth, then the marginal rate of transformation will decrease. And here we will have, for example, suppose at point A, the production possibility frontier in the figure just previously that we uh, shows producing you know, uh, little food and too much clothing uh, is an output inefficiency because the firm with market power use different prices 
in the output decision than consumers use in their consumption decision. So when we have a monopoly, the market will fail, we will not have efficiency, but we will have inefficiency. And also incomplete information. Consumer must have accurate information about the market prices or production quality for markets to operate efficiently. So lack of information can change supply. So buy product with no value. For example, um, you don't have an information. Uh, they advertise a product as a, sump, a supplement, uh, as a vitamin, okay? And uh, actually that product does not go for a rigorous scientific committee. It has no medical value. It has no value, actually you take it, it will not harm you, but it will not actually, your body it not, will not benefit at all. Since you don't have this old information, you will spend a lot of money uh, and you will get a product with no value. So, we will have inefficiency. Or you don't buy enough of the product with value because you don't have full information. Another product which is actually a vitamin or supplement, which has a very high value and you don't buy it and you buy that one with no value because you don't have this information. So market may also never develop. Why? Maybe impossible to get insurance because suppliers of insurance lack information. For example, uh, uh, you, me as a company of insurance, I want to open, I want to offer a new insurance plan, for example, uh, against fire, house fire. So if I don't have information about the willingness to, to, to how much willingness to pay for the, 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 those they want to insure that their houses and how much actually the houses get burned, then it is impossible for me to come out with this business or to offer this service. Then externalities. What is externality? Externality is when a consumption of production activity has an indirect effect on other consumption of production activity that is not reflected directly in the market price. Actually, we are going to talk about externality in the yeah, in, in uh, later, I put it in, in, in simple example. External, we have positive and negative externality. Positive externality is, for example, you are living in a residence area, a residential area, then you build a house there. If your neighbors always put their neighbor, uh, their um, uh, area very clean, they they plant flower. That is positive externality for you. If you want to to sell the house because of that very nice, beautiful environment, everyone is clean, also, uh, you know, uh, they put a guard, that will increase the value of your house. So, positive. But if let's say you are living in, in a neighborhood where everyone, they don't care, they throw rubbish, even your house is more beautiful. You build a very beautiful house, and your house costs, for example, millions. But in the area, there is, people are not well, uh, you know, uh, in terms of ethics, not very good. They throw rubbish everywhere. There is a lot of thieves there. That negative externality, it will affect the price of your house. Even that is very good quality. You spend a lot of millions, but it will make, once you want to sell it, you may reduce the value of that house. So that is negative externality. So these externalities affect the efficiency, make the market inefficient. So market prices do not always reflect the activities of either producer or consumers. Consumption or production has indirect effect on the other consumption or production not reflected in the market price. I give you an example. There is a company uh, producing, uh, for example, uh, uh, medicine, for example. And after you, when you produce medicine, you have chemicals. Why well, you throw the chemicals in the river? But you, you live down the stream of the river and you use that river actually for your activities, uh, swimming, also fishing. If I am here to produce that medicine and I throw the chemicals in the river, that will cost you and will affect your leisure of swimming, 
and also your fishing. So it will affect your consumption and also affect the production because if I am throwing this uh, rubbish or chemicals on the, on, on the river without paying access on that, actually there is tax to pay that, then that will motivate me to produce more. So that also will affect the efficiency of the market. And we have public goods. Public goods means that no one is excluded from, you know, uh, using this good. Non-exclusive non normal good that can be made available cheaply, but which once available is difficult to prevent others from consuming it. I'll give you an example. For example, a park. Once the park open free, free of charge, you cannot say, oh, you are not paying tax, you cannot go and, and enjoy. Or oh, you are paying tax, so everyone can. So company thinking about researching a new technology, it can get patent. And that will affect. Once it's made public, others can duplicate it. For example, you will spend millions to develop a technology to produce smartphone. Then, you don't have patent for it. After you spend all these years of research and the technology is ready, anyone can get this technology and duplicate it and therefore for free because you don't have patent. So this is also, we will have inefficiency on that because if you develop something, you don't have patent for it, okay, copyright, then it is public, public good for everyone. And this is why as, uh, once uh, if, if, if you remember, at the beginning, once Apple produced the smartphone, the iPhone it started with a war in, in, in the court, uh, you know, legal war with Samsung, when Samsung duplicated the iPhone and they, they, uh, they uh, produced uh, Galaxy, right? If you remember, the first Galaxy is a copy of, of, of the iPhone. And uh, Apple spent billions of, uh, of, 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 of dollars to do research to develop that. So why after five years, start in 2007, 2012, after 2012, we did not hear any more about this war. Why? Because in US, the pattern of copyright is only five years. So after five years, that pattern of copyright, it will be available for everyone for free as a public goods. So that for the first five years, it was not as a public good. Nowadays, anyone has very huge capital, he can copy the technology from Samsung, from Apple, from whatever, and come out with phones. So that after that, you can say we have so many uh, brand of smartphone come to the market because they can have the technology very cheap for free. Whereas this technology actually first initiated by Apple. So this is another thing that makes efficiency not to happen. So four things. We have uh, imperfect market as a monopoly or market power. We have public good, externality, and lack of information or imperfect information. So these four reasons why the market fails. 